Fox is here to tell us how they're doing it. Karen? Well, Catherine, these people are members of what's called a hover club. Their little hovercrafts don't hesitate to rush in where boats, cars, and snowmobiles fear to tread. On land, on sea, and in the air, the hovercraft goes everywhere. Bob Wint, the engineer, brought the hovercraft to Cordova, and little by little, he won the people over. Now parents and children alike float by on a cushion of air, because for what they like to do, the wheel is too square. I think if, if people had thought about hovercrafts a long time ago, before, well, before they start putting wheels on cars, well, maybe all the cars would be running around now on a cushion of air, and the roads would look entirely different. You don't see too many boats that ride on land and they can go over water and then come back on the land again. Bob Wint was an engineer for McDonnell Douglas when he first heard about the hovercraft, a craft that floats on a cushion of air, never touching water or land when the engines are on. The challenge was too much for him. He quit his job and began to build and help other people build hovercrafts. Bob's larger craft uses a Ford car engine, but he says the smaller crafts are fairly easy to build using two five to eight horsepower engines. Uh, the lift engine has a fan attached to the bottom of it, and uh, this fan blows air under the craft. Um, some of the air is trapped in this uh, skirt material. When this skirt inflates with air all the way around, it forms an air trap, kind of like a car tire. Um, the rest of the air goes down under the craft and uh, the pressure builds up and it lifts the craft up, just like if you were inflating a, a flat tire on a car. It'll lift the whole car when you inflate the tire. Um, the air is continually fed in, so it escapes out from around the sides and uh, it lifts the craft up and it, it uh, lubricates the uh, uh, the craft so that it can slide easily over any surface. Uh, the only other important component on it is the uh, thrust system. It consists of an engine that is in under here and the engine drives a propeller and the propeller gives it its forward push. Add some plywood, a little paint, some welding, and a lot of enthusiasm, and for two to seven hundred dollars, you can have a small craft that can go almost anywhere. At this point, though, the hovercraft is used mainly on water. It gets six to seven miles to a gallon of gasoline at 40 miles per hour, compared to two or three miles per gallon in the average motorboat. But Wint doubts his craft will replace cars. The hovercraft tends to slip off concrete roads because the roads have a crown on them. Also also, steering the hovercraft is not a precise art, so maneuvering a relatively narrow road could be tricky. A hovercraft is supported by air, and uh, uh, the water has no effect on it. Um, so if you're going forward and you turn the craft uh, in a new direction, it won't be going in that new direction. It'll just be pointing in that new direction. It'll still be sliding in the old direction. Therefore, you've got to give it some thrust, some power, to push it in the new direction that it's pointing. But the hovercraft can take over where traditional vehicles leave off. You can use it to replace a snowmobile. Uh, it's a lot safer than a snowmobile in this area because uh, um, you, you don't have to worry whether the ice is thick or thin. You can still go out there with complete confidence. The hovercraft also stays afloat in the shallow water slough behind Wint's Cordova home, where most boats would end up moored in the mud. Wint says only a handful of people in this area have hovercrafts, but he expects the crafts to catch on as more people find out about them. Actually, these odd little hovermobiles have been around since 1959 when an Englishman began building them. He realized the possibilities for moving heavy cargo this way. They use this extensively now for moving very large um, oil tanks. They move uh, complete oil storage tanks that are several hundred feet in diameter. They put a cushion of air under them and slide them around. The hovercrafts Wind has helped build have also done well in competition. 11-year-old Nick Sandquist's craft recently took first and second place ribbons in two races at a national rally. Uh, what do you like to use it for? Uh, driving on land. You like it on land? Why yeah. is that? It's a lot funner. It goes faster on land. Now they say just about anybody can drive one of these things. I hope they're right because it's a little cool for a swim. 
Apparently, it's not as easy as it looks when the kids are at the throttle. Kids adapt to it very easily, but uh, adults seem to have quite a bit more difficulty. They seem to think that when you turn the steering wheel, uh, it's supposed to go that way right away, but uh, it doesn't. <laughs> So I think that really there's a lot of kids around here that, that drive a lot better than, than their parents. The parents won't get in the crafts because they feel that they're being showed up by their kids. the craft I had my trouble but it wasn't enough to burst my bubble I did feel safer when the kid next to me was steering especially when I saw disaster nearing but who can drive better I really don't care because now I can say I've floated on air